Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I wish I could be with you in person, but prior travel commitments meant that I couldn't get to Singapore in time, so I have recorded this presentation for you. First, I must show you our disclaimer, and then we can get down to the content. I'm going to look at the aspirational path to net zero CO2 emissions and the impact on platinum and palladium, but first, a few key fundamental points. Metals Focus is recording a platinum market surplus of 29 tonnes for 2021 and 42 tonnes for this year. This is prior to any exchange traded product activity. It does, however, include estimates for physical investment. And if this was excluded so that we are looking purely at total supply against fabrication demand, then these surpluses expand to 39 and 50 tonnes respectively, equivalent to nine and 12 weeks demand cover. The equivalent exercise for palladium gives a bottom line surplus of four tonnes last year and a deficit of 15 tonnes this. Private retail investment is negligible and these balances equate to a surplus of less than one week's global fabrication demand and a deficit of between two and three weeks in 2022. So we're looking at a more or less broadly balanced market. Metals Focus also estimates platinum above ground stock levels at end 2021 at 314 tonnes, rising to almost 330 by the end of this year. And the group notes that this will be the highest level in its series. Palladium stocks, which had been a long term decline, were boosted last year by the fracturing of the auto sector and the reduction of the South African miners' work in progress inventory pipeline. At the start of this year, palladium above ground stocks stood at roughly 15 months global fabrication cover, and the group expects that this will decline to a series low this year. Meanwhile, the suspension from good delivery lists by the LPPM of Russia's state-owned PGM refineries has affected price volatility both in spot from time to time and in the forwards as liquidity has thinned. The word from the Rilsk is that there has been little impact on business as the company prioritises customer contracts rather than LPPM OTC activity. What we can probably expect, though, is a bifurcation in the markets as material travels down fresh routes. What Norilsk has said is that the reduction in the number of international flights due to sanctions has had an effect on logistics. As I record this in late May, the professional sentiment is still uncertain. In the managed money sector on NYMEX, there was heavy platinum liquidation plus increased short positions in March and April, but some bargain hunting has been starting to appear. Palladium managed money positions have been under steady liquidation and rising shorts, leaving the market in the largest net short position since the start of this year. Meanwhile, Japanese, Chinese platinum imports rocketed in March and April, which may be continued interest as a result of the tightening in diesel emission limits, but could also reflect some industrial bargain hunting from the oil and gas and chemical industries. Palladium imports into China, which was so strong in 2020 ahead of tightening emission limits, eased in 2021 and remained steady. The ETPs have been seeing light liquidation. And here we have the automotive market share in the three major PGMs. And you can see here, this is taken over a 10 year average, but platinum is roughly 39% at 82 tonnes. Palladium is just under 80% at 172 tonnes, and rhodium is about 80% at 28 tonnes. So, as we can see here, passenger cars currently account for roughly 10% of CO2 emissions, and this is due in no small part to the work of emission control catalysts. So, getting rid of unburned hydrocarbons and carbon monoxide delivers carbon dioxide, which is what we don't want. This is the very simplest level of the chemistry involved. There are any number of combinations of weighting and additional technology dependent on the vehicle and the local domestic environmental requirements. Platinum and palladium can to some degree be interchanged within catalytic converters, and the relative price levels over the past three years has prompted some work on this. BASF, for example, has developed the trimetal catalyst that uses metal oxides plus platinum, palladium and rhodium, and which enables partial substitution of, platinum, of palladium with platinum without compromising emission standards and rollout started in 2021. Globally, the World Platinum Investment Council suggests that while the semiconductor supply dislocations reduced global light vehicle production from 87 million units to 76 million last year, the continued and widening substitution of platinum for palladium saw over six tons of additional platinum demand, with that number likely to double this year, even with the problems with semiconductor supply chain dislocations. Over 2020 and 2021, fossil fuel vehicles have shown compound average monthly loss rates in the States and Europe at 2.1 and 2.0 percent respectively, while electric vehicles have grown by 3.8 percent and 5.8 percent per month. China's fossil fuel vehicles have grown, albeit by less than 1 percent per month, but the push into electric has seen that component grow by over 11 percent over the period. 
So by December 2021, across the three areas combined, electric production market share has grown from 5% to 24% at a rate of 137% per annum, with fossil fuels posting a 2.4% per annum loss rate. Global EV production in absolute terms has grown from just over 166,000 units in January 2020 to just over 900,000 in December 2021, an annual rate of 133%. Battery vehicles fall into different categories. The battery electric vehicle, which is the predominant area, the battery needs to be plugged into an external power source in order to recharge, as do, not surprisingly, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. In the hybrid electric vehicle battery in, in the power in the hybrid uh, sorry in the hybrid electric vehicle the battery powers the vehicle up to an intermediate speed at which point the co internal combustion engine takes over and in the process recharges the batteries and within the electric sector itself the most rapid growth as i say has been in the batteries at eight and a half percent per month to reach almost 700,000 vehicles in december 2021 Batteries accounted for 76% of the total electrified fleet, with PHEVs at 24% and fuel cells at less than 1%, but that will change dramatically over time. And this is where platinum has a bright future. Polymer electrolyte membrane electrolysis takes water as its feedstock with oxygen as the byproduct. The hydrogen is then the feedstock of the fuel cell, and the byproduct of this is water and heat. Metal Soaker's long term projections suggest that over the 10 years to 2030, the hydrogen economy will absorb over 84 tonnes of platinum, equating to roughly 4% of platinum mine supply, while the hydrogen electrolyzer market will absorb 19% of the iridium supply, as roughly 100 gigawatts of hydrolyzer capacity is in, in store. The good news for the platinum market here is that fuel cells use roughly twice the amount of platinum than ICE, or internal combustion engine vehicles. One motor company has suggested that for a 700,000 cell stack, it would require 70,000 ounces of platinum, which implies roughly three grams per cell. This is bound to be reduced over time by virtue of persistent thrifting, but industry suggestions that heavy duty fuel cell vehicles could possibly multiply by a factor of 60 between 2019 and 2030, suggests that the potential for platinum offtake in this market is very substantial. Mining companies, for example, with Amplatz and the Vanguard, are already starting to use fuel cell powered mining equipment. EV production forecasts, as you can see from the chart to the lower right, have been raised over time as the pandemic has accelerated the rate of change, and we are now looking at almost 70 million units by 2040. The International Energy Agency has the following global milestones for electrification in net zero emissions, and they're looking for the share of electric vehicles in stock to be roughly 20% by 2030 in cars, 23% in buses, 22% in vans, and 8% in heavy trucks, but that rises to 60% by 2050. These scrap projections here are based on the fact that the average life of a car is 12 to 15 years. Obviously, there are regional variations, but this works as a rule of thumb. And the end of the decade is where the picture really starts to change. Fuel cells will not have it all their own way. A McKinsey study, for example, has postulated that over the next 40 years, a portfolio of powertrains will develop that favour battery powered vehicles for shorter trips. The US target range currently is 300 miles per charge and parts of Europe have actually already achieved that. While fuel cells are likely to be more effective for longer journeys and heavier vehicles, especially as range to weight is an exponential relationship in battery powered vehicles. Metals Focus estimates that fuel cell powered electric vehicle production will amount to a cumulative 1.6 million units by 2030. Winding in an estimate for maritime users, storage and electrolysis suggests that cumulative offtake over the period to 2030 could reach five tons of platinum. Our in-house estimates for the changes in platinum demand in ICE vehicles over the same period suggest that ICE demand will start to be narrowly eroded towards the end of the decade, but that cumulative use between 2022 and 2030 would be a gain of roughly 22 tonnes. The following decade, however, could see cumulative production losses from the ICE sector of up to 40 million vehicles, and when we add in projected scrap return, the fleet could contract by more than 130 million while BNEF estimates suggest that the fuel cell vehicle fleet could be up to 9 million vehicles by 2040, with battery electric vehicles reaching a whopping 588 million by that time. PHEV, however, assuming everything goes to schedule, of course, that tops out in 2035 because it is now being legally enshrined that internal combustion engines must stop, stop coming off the production line by the end of that year. 
So this, in theory, would take vehicle numbers down to 40 million and declining to 31 million by the end of the decade. To round off, we expect palladium demand in autos to continue to rise through to 2030 with a cumulative increase of 52 tonnes. But if hybrids really do stop coming off the production line in 2035, then palladium demand could take a very hard hit. And from roughly 233 tonnes per annum of demand in vehicles in 2030, it could conceivably be negative in 2040. And on that sobering note, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference.